good morning. Uh, first, I want to thank Creative Mornings and the History Museum for having me here, and also Meredith and Daniel for um, organizing this. So my name is Frank Regano. Um, as you heard, I've been here since 96 in Santa Fe, moved from Manhattan. Um, we started, my partner Mariana and I uh, started Parallel Studios, which is the nonprofit organization that, that produces the Currents Festival, Currents New Media Festival. We started that in 2002. And we really started it for, um, for local artists at that point. Uh, Marianne and I were both um, artists, had started out her as a painter, myself as a theater person, and then sculpture, and then installations, and then video installations. Um, so at that point, there was really, except for sight, which has you know, always been on the cutting edge of showing work, but you had to really be somebody to be at sight. So we started a place for a local artists. And our first show was in CCA, Center for Contemporary Arts in the Warehouse. We had eight artists, and Woody and Stena Vasulka were part of that. If you don't know who they are, they're kind of some of the pioneers of video art, in, in, you know, world pioneers of video art. They were right there in uh, New York with Nam June Pike, and they started the kitchen, and so they're, and they, they moved here in 1980. So it was them and a few other local artists, and the show was a big hit. People loved it. It was all video, video installations. And um, the warehouse at that point was in pretty rough shape. I had to cover the entire roof with tarps <laughs> to keep it from leaking when it rained on all the equipment that we had up everywhere, so it was a challenge. So after that, we put up, periodically would put up shows at different locations, like we were at Art Santa Fe twice when they were in the in the um, convention center. We had a half of the upstairs. Um, and then at galleries, Salon Margraf, Zane Bennett. So we would do pop-ups. And in 2010, we decided, you know, it would be great to really make this an annual big event. So at that point, we approached El Museo Cultural, which is a 30,000 square foot building. And put on our first festival in 2010, which was really locals and people around the country. Well, in our, this is gonna be our eighth year, and we've grown into an international festival, basically. We'll be bringing in people from all over the US, um, people from Austria, Germany, England, Canada, Japan. So it's very much an international festival. Um, and who's been, who here has been to Currents? Oh, okay, that's about half. That's pretty good. Because uh, Currents, for some reason, tends to be one of the biggest unknown events in the city, <laughs> which is very interesting. It's very interesting. But people, we tend to get a devoted following, and people love it. Because it's really the interesting, and I hear this from artists, international artists who come to the festival and who go to festivals all over the world, that Currents is really right at the top. Yep. yep one of the best in the world. And um, so it's interesting that actually more people outside of Santa Fe know about Currents than people in Santa Fe. Now that could be our, our own fault, PR fault, um, because really we're artists, right? <laughs> Mariana and I started this. And it's really kind of a grassroots event. It's come up from the grassroots. And one of, our, one of the things we always believed in and kind of been, been testing is that you don't have to make, pick work that is accessible or watered down to engage all demographics. You know, you don't have to go, OK, well, let's dumb this down a little bit, and then everybody will get it. Not necessary whatsoever. So long as you create an environment, and this is what we try to do, so long as you create an environment that when people walk in, they don't feel stupid, or they don't feel like they have to know something before they can appreciate the work, they get it. They get it right away because they're not questioning. It's just they have a response to the work. 
And uh, in fact, we had, <laughs> we've had people come back the second year, like come back, go to the first year, come back the second year. They've never seen anything like this before. They go for, by the next year, they've, they know what they like. They're critiquing work. They're make, giving you their opinion. <laughs> it's great. It's really great. Um, so as far as beyond, the work we're showing is really, it's beyond actually the concept of art in a certain way. It's like, it's got its own, I'm not even sure what the category is, we call it new media art, but it incorporates so many different things. Our, our only real um, criteria is that it has to have some kind of digital component or, or, or electronic art component. For instance, let me tell you about just a couple of pieces that are coming this year that don't really seem to fit into currently any category, really. We have this uh, Jacob Tonsky from Chicago has a piece that's a Victorian couch, um, an authentic Victorian couch that he took apart and where the springs were, he put in two satellite gyroscopes. So the Victorian couch, when you see it, is standing on its front leg <laughs> at an angle like this, and you can see it <laughs> balancing itself. <laughs> and, you know, and it's hooked up to a computer that's, that's making this all possible. And, uh, and if it falls down, which occasionally it'll fall over, supposedly, uh, it just busts into pieces because he's taken it apart and put it back together with magnets. Oh. So the whole thing can just fall apart and then, you, and then put it back up and just get it going again. We have, a, we have another piece we hope, we're working on it still, to um, uh, Verena Friedrich from um, Cologne, Germany. It's a plexiglass box. And on the top of this clear <coughs> plexiglass, on top of this is a little, little like robot kind of arm that dips into this little dish, comes up, moves over, and then goes into the top of the box and blows a soap bubble. And that soap bubble drops in the box about halfway down and sits there <laughs> from anywhere from 10 minutes to a half an hour. It's called the long now. <laughs> and it's just a beautiful piece. We're really hoping, we're having, it's very expensive, the shipping, we're still working, I'm pretty sure it's gonna happen. So anyway, this is what I mean by beyond. You know, what defines this as art? Or is that even an appropriate term? I don't know, we don't really worry about it. And we have very broad taste. So we, there's something at currents for everybody, basically is what it comes down. We'll have single channel, well let me do this. I'm gonna show you a really short video of last year's festival and um, uh, the light's a little funny in here, so you might have a hard time seeing things, but I think it'll be fine. This, so this is a, like a three-minute documentation of last year's festival. And then we can talk about it. I might s talk about things while it's running. So we're at El Museo in the rail yard. up to muscle stimulators there's somebody playing them it's called duty We have about seven, six VR pieces this year. The best is watching people in the VR headset.
that's an augmented reality piece. We also have performances that go on. Chinese shredding social media. This represents, this piece is very much, which I'll talk about afterwards, about interactive work, which is really one of the biggest things happening. Um, it, it's always in June. It opens on June 9th this year and runs to June 25th. We're closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, opening night, we have kind of unorthodox hours. Uh, Monday, opening night is from 6 till midnight and there'll be outdoor um, installations and music. Um, uh, it's like the opening weekend will be open from like 12 to midnight on Saturday uh, on Sunday and then our typical hour time is noon till 7 but you can find all this on our website at currentsnewmedia.org um, opening night we usually have 2,000 2,500 people there so it's a big party and there's some food and there's a bar and it's a great time um, but let me talk about really how the work we've seen in our in our period. Where are, what time have we got here? Let me see. I'm good. Okay. Um, how work is as one of the things about the media arts is they're constantly because of technology and the development of technology and the speed at which it is being developed. It's constantly moving beyond itself. So when we started. Um, and even in 2002, there was very little interactive work at that point. Although, I mean, there was, you know, out in the world out there, there was some people working on interactive work for sure. Even Woody Vasulka had interactive work before that. But now, but when we start in 2002 and then uh, up, till, up till now, we've seen a continuous development of what's called interactive work, which what that means is the, the visitor's presence, either just by their presence, alters the artwork or changes the artwork in some way or through actual physical um, interaction changes things. So it can just be presence or actually uh, interacting with it physically. So we've seen that just go from zero because we get, you know, we do an international call for arts, for artists. And this year we got s over 600, you know, submissions. And at the beginning, nobody was submitting anything for interactive work. So what we've seen is it's developed from really a video based form with video, just what's called single channel video, watching art videos, or video incorporated in some way into installations, which means uh, an environment you can move through or move around, um, to where all of a sudden we started seeing interactive work start to develop, augmented reality work, which you saw something here, for instance, one of the pieces here there was a, a mat, like a vinyl mat on the floor that had code embedded. It looks like a pattern, but it was actually code embedded into the mat. And if you took an iPad or a phone and you had this free app called Layar downloaded on your phone and you put it on that code, all of a sudden you saw these people standing on this mat and moving around. Now you were seeing them, but at the same time you were seeing real time space. For instance, if somebody at that point while you were looking at it walked through that group of people, you saw, the, you saw them walk through that group of people. So that, and you could go 360 around it. And uh, so the, or you can, what's happening a lot is you'll see um, like a, a photograph or a painting or something that actually has encode embedded in it. So when you look at it with your phone or you look at it with an iPad, other things begin to happen. It may animate 
or there may be something else in there. Um, so AR and then now VR. Last year, in 2000, about four years ago, we had our first VR piece. It was really an incredible work. Um, young man from, was living in Australia, but from Chile. His father had been in the, um, in Pinochet's army and had been part of an, an execution of like seven people. So what happened when you entered this VR world, you were first in the artist's studio looking at his work. I mean, you were walking in his studio looking at his work and then you could go outside and then if you looked any place for like two seconds, you went that way. I mean, there were hot spots. So as soon as you found a hot spot and you looked at it for two seconds, you moved towards it and you ended up at the execution site and you watched the execution happen. You know, this was animated, this was not footage, but it was a very powerful and people were just, as soon as you had VR, people were lined up to do it. Well, this year we've got like six pieces, I think. One is the artist comes in early, he records people that are, you know, either the ar other artists, people who are working on the project, pass her through, is he'll record them, and then when you go in, it's called Titchener's Cage. And when you go in, you put on the headset and you're sitting down. He has you sit down on the floor. And you're in this cage, actually. It's, and it's made uh, like a point cloud, it's called, where it's kind of diffused in a way. But then all of a sudden, all these people start coming in and coming up to you and either singing to you or talking to you or talking about their life or telling stories. And it could be one person, it could be three people. It, uh, they just start interacting with you. And you have, a, you have a button in your hand, although I think he's not using a button, he's using something else. And when you hit that button, you pop out of your body. And you're watching yourself and the people that are interacting with you there. He, this guy, his name is Nadav Asor, he's from um, Connecticut. No, Rhode Island. And uh, he has this thing about of simulated out-of-the-body experiences. Like he also, we have an experimental documentary series which is at, going to be playing at the Violet Crown. We have a series that's free at the Violet Crown that you can go to and see the experimental doc documentaries. And his piece is about this young man who'd had a really rough life. You know, drugs, you know, in jail, just tough. Then he found Jesus. But he also found drones at the same time. <laughs> and his thing is to be controlling the drone while he's watching what the drone is seeing so that he can see himself from outside himself. So he's simulating out of the body experiences. It's really fascinating. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sure we're about out of time. Uh, let's see. Oh, and Currents is citywide. You know, we're also, besides being at El Museo, we are, Meow Wolf is a partner. They're going to have a concert at uh, Meow on the second weekend. Um, they're also very generously paying, uh, sending their, their crew over to install currents and deinstall currents. So they're walking the walk. And uh, we're also at Foreman Concept Gallery. There'll be an element there. At uh, Axel Contemporary is involved. Um, let's see, who else is involved? Uh, Santa Fe University of Art and Design will, on opening weekend will have stuff in the plaza, we think, although they seem very in flux at this point, so that's not quite clear, but usually they're involved. Um, so Violet Crown, like I said, is involved, but all this, there's a very elaborate schedule that goes on and on on, on our website, currentsnewmedia.org. Also, by next week or the week after, you can download an app to your phone, which is free. And that app will have the whole schedule, all the artists that are going to be there, links to the artist's work. And it'll also have, what we have at the festival is that every artwork is a beacon, this little thing on the wall. So with that app, if you have it installed and you have your Bluetooth turned on, when you walk up to a piece, it'll immediately pop up who the artist is, tell you all about the artists, the work. You can link to their websites. So it's your guide through, through the festival. Um, 
please come. I guarantee you, you will enjoy it. Yes. Go ahead. I, I think the most amazing thing is this is the best show I've ever seen, and it was free. I don't think you even mentioned that. How do you do it? Well, I'm a little hesitant to mention that because <laughs> um, we are having uh, serious financial problems given the current climate um, in the U.S. and our future is. We'll see what happens, you know, in the in as far as funding goes. Um, so we're thinking because we're having a little shortfall at this point, we're actually thinking about having a five dollar suggested donation for anybody over eighteen. Worth ten times. It's fabulous. I agree, but it kind of it's hard for us. <laughs> we don't even like to put that on there. Yeah. We have to basically we have to make up twenty thousand dollars shortfall at this point. So we're thinking about doing that and. It's really tough for us. Because our whole thing is being, because uh, we get all demographics there. And that's what we want. And we want lots of kids, we want families. We get everything from people who are working class families who've never seen anything like this before to art snobs. I mean, we get the whole, the whole gamut and that's how we want it to be. And the important thing is we do not in any way tailor the art to the crowd. We just pick what we like, and we have very broad taste, and people love it. Let's do some questions real quick. Um, anybody got any questions? Do you judge the cases? You mean like for a prize at the end? No, we're kind of not in, I mean, you know, we're, we're idealists. <laughs> and that is not a very <laughs> successful way to do things. Uh -huh. uh, luckily, there's people around us who are not idealists. But we don't really, really want to judge anybody. Or, I mean, what we do for the artist, we don't, um, we don't even, we pay local artists a very small honorarium. We don't pay artists who come in. But what we do, do, which many festivals do not do, is we pay for their travel and lodging and shipping of all their equipment. Wow. And that's a big number. <laughs> and they're very appreciative. You know, so, I mean, we wish we could, you know, they deserve to be paid money, and if we could get to that point, we would, but we're not there. But it's really, it's a world-class show. And, but yet it is very humble at the same time. So, and that's the balance we're trying to keep. So spread the word. Um, also, you can donate on our website, and we really need support at this time, at this point. Uh, now and into the future. So no, and no more questions. And any questions? <laughs> yes. So are you grant driven? Do you have somebody who gets you grants? Grant? Oh yeah, we have money. We get grants from the um, uh, National Endowment for the Arts, Santa Fe Arts Commission, New Mexico Arts, um, several foundations, New Mexico Tourism. But let me tell you, this is, okay, there's going to be close to 100 artists in this show. Our entire budget, we work on this all year, right? Our entire budget for this thing, this thing goes on for almost three weeks. Our entire budget is $200,000. That's our entire budget. So, we're very good at making do, we're good at making an elegant environment with very little money. And El Museo looks great with the lights off. <laughs> it looks great with the lights off. So we can definitely use your help. And so just to close with the theme, the form itself, almost the, the name beyond almost is the perfect name for the form itself because it's constantly moving beyond itself. And one of the things, one of the, th oh, one last point, that's one of our driving uh, principles. This is not, this show is not about technology. It's about art with, and how technology serves the artist. It's about the artist using technology as a tool. We're not a, we're not a gadget show. We're not trying to show off software or hardware, but they're using the latest in software and hardware. The driving force is the art. 
and uh, which is constantly moving beyond itself. So we don't have, ever have a theme. What the people submit usually is its own theme, and sometimes that is driven by what the newest technology is. Thank you very much. <laughs>